Hi, I'm Kim Tasso and today we're going to talk a little bit about coaching and I'm going to uh, give you uh, outlines of uh, three models in coaching which you should be able to uh, use. Um, you'll see that I'm wearing a baseball cap and that's because most people associate coaching with with sports coaching although actually today it's because I'm having a lockdown bad hair day so excuses for that. So uh, coaching is a key tool um, in helping people to adapt to change and we're going all going through loads of change in our home and work lives at the moment facing very uncertain futures so I thought it was particularly apt um, and every leader and manager needs to uh, know about uh, coaching uh, it's a core ski, uh, skill set whether you're working in training or development or delegation or motivation or change management um, but I thought I'd start with a, a little story about my journey with coaching and where it started. Um, many years ago, I was um, working as a consultant, combining my management and my psychology uh, backgrounds. And I was helping to negotiate a collaborative arrangement between what was then a leading psychology uh, practice and um, one of the leading uh, coaching uh, organisations. And I was really interested in what I learned about coaching uh, through that. And I asked at the time the guy who was the founder of that uh, coaching company, which is now OCM, the late Eric Parslow, if I might uh, do the course. Um, now, Eric had experienced coaching first as a dad, uh, coaching his sons in rugby, and then he'd gone on to create uh, one of the first multimedia e-learning businesses called the Epic Group. And I think that was the first one to have an IPO. Um, he was also a member of the um, European Mentoring and Counts uh, Coaching Council and he'd written lots of books on coaching um, and to my great surprise and delight he said that if I did the course he would be my personal supervisor. So that 2001 course uh, learning with uh, Eric's guidance and uh, taking a, a, a team of board members through their transitions was a really transformational moment for me. Um, anyway um, more recently I've been talking to lots of lawyers and human resources and learning and development people in law firms in the UK um, in my preparations and research for a book on essential soft skills for lawyers which will be published shortly by Globe Law and Business and it was interesting how often the idea of coaching came up during those interviews so particularly relevant today so let's start off with what is coaching um, and I thought I would to make sure I get it absolutely right, read Eric's original uh, definition. I'm going to read it slowly because it's really important what uh, the elements are. He said, coaching is a process that helps and supports people manage their own learning in order to maximise their potential, develop their skills, improve their performance and become the person they want to be. That's a fabulous uh, definition. What we know from that is, is coaching is a process. It's a structure, how we go through things. And it's quite different from mentoring. And mentoring is usually someone who's older and wiser imparting their knowledge to somebody. Whereas coaching is a, is a process and it helps through skilled questioning, the person who's being coached to explore their reality and to find their own options and their own solutions. So it really helps them build their confidence because they're, they're the ones finding uh, the answers. Now, to be a great coach, you need lots of empathy because you've got to see things from the perspective of the person that you're coaching. And there's lots of other skills needed, like you know creating solutions and problem solving and managing performance and teaching and guiding and offering perspective um, and challenging and providing feedback. Um, you're really, really exploring for information. So asking really good questions and listening really carefully to the answer are two really core skills in coaching, just like in, in selling really. So a bit of a background, let's start with our first model. And I'm going to show you this plant. This is my metaphor for the first model. Now this happens to be a frangipani plant, which has beautiful flowers and grows throughout South America. And this is my third attempt at growing one and we're doing good so far, so I'm all right. Um, so probably the best known model for coaching comes from a gentleman called John Whitmore. And this was one of his early books, Coaching for Performance. Um, and it's a really great introduction to the subject. And his model was called GROW. And GROW stood for the stages of the coaching process, um, which was uh, goals, reality, options, and will to act. I've often found that people don't know their goals at the outset, so often we start with exploring reality in the coaching process. A similar version to that GROW model is called the uh, four O's. That's objectives, overview, 
options an outcome so there you've got two for one there okay so the second model i want to talk to you about is designated by this which is a smile uh, this is bertie's toy and if i ask bertie to model this for you he would we'll run off with it or we go into a play anyway so it's a smile um, and smile stood for self managed uh, integrated uh, learning and there was a four stage process for that where we would analyze for self-awareness plan for responsibility implement the changes using assessments and tools and techniques and learning resources and skills training and then evaluating success when i learned to be a coach originally we would um, give our people being coached through one of these books which has lots of assessments and guidance and techniques and tools and things so we had a little book which is the digital version now to to take people through the coaching process um, one of the things we learned, and again from psychology, we know that people learn in very different ways. Um, again, we can't just impose our, our preferences. So there's some material on learning styles on the website if you'd like to learn more about that. And we also need to understand that people go through a huge range of emotions as they tackle change. And I did a recent little piece around all the emotions you go through as you adapt to changes like from working from home and coronavirus. And that's not surprising really when 70 to 90% of our behaviour is, is habit. So, you know, it takes enormous energy to break out and do something new. Um, there's another recent uh, psychologist, Gabriel Oettinger, probably pronounced that wrong, um, who studied mental contrasting and she had a model called WHOOP, which stood for wish, outcome, obstacle, and plan. Um, and she said, you know, don't be an optimist, don't be a pessimist. The most successful people are those who have a positive view of the future, but a realistic assessment of the obstacles and barriers going forward. Um, and how you think about the future has a huge impact on your cognition, your emotion and your behaviour. OK, so that's two models you've seen so far. So the third model I'm going to talk about, the most recent one, is depicted by this nice, cosy, warm, heart-shaped hot water bottle. Um, this was from a 2019 book um, around something called Compassionate Coaching. And you can see the, the kind of main theme here is helping uh, people change by three authors um, who drew hugely on the area of neuroscience and that entire book is evidence-based some of it is quite tough going on on the neuroscience piece um, they define coaching and I'm going to give them the benefit of me reading exactly what they said because you can then remember what, what Eric's definition was they all define coaching as a facilitative or helping relationship with the purpose of achieving some type of change learning or a new level of individual or organisational performance. So a lot of similarities with that original definition. They also stress the need to have real positive energy in the coaching environment to focus on developing people's strengths, not just focusing on correcting their weaknesses. They also found that the desire to change must really outweigh the obligation to change. Um, so the authors define a five stage uh, process for their coaching model. And I'm going to just show you those there and they'll be included in the additional resources. And the, the, the first four stages are very similar. But the point that they make uh, most importance of is that fifth point around maintaining resonant relationships. And I wanted to just say a word about that. Um, they talk about the need for the coach to have a really high quality connection with the person they're working with. And this reminded me very much of the humanistic approach to psychology and counselling. And that says to be a really good uh, helper, you have to do three things. One, first of all, you have to have really good empathy with the person you're working with. Secondly, you have to be really congruent. You have to be really honest in what you're feeling and how you're reacting and what you're receiving and, and, and how you're working with that person. So that's real honesty there. And the third part is about universal positive regard, which means you can't be judgmental and you have to look at all people as having you know, positive intentions with what they're doing. Um, humanistic uh, psychologists also believe that everyone has a drive to self-actualise. In fact, the humanists use this idea of a plant. They say human beings are like plants. They are all kind of programmed to grow and flourish with the right conditions, sunlight, water, warmth. But some people uh, get stuck 
So whether it's counselling or coaching is used as a, an intervention to help people unstick so they can reach their, their full uh, potential. So I've given you three quick models. Of course, there's much more to coaching than those three models and all those skills. And again, back in, uh, I think, 2017, I reviewed this book, Key Coaching Models, which covers over 70 different tools and techniques that you can use as, as a coach. So have a look at that. And qualified coaches these days um, draw hugely on the power of positive uh, psychology. So have a look perhaps in, in that area as well. So thanks for watching. Sorry it was so fast and furious as we sped through all that material. Um, and I really hope to connect with you uh, soon. Thank you.